firstly like to congratulate you because it seems to me like you take human worth very seriously but on another level have you had any complaints from residences or anybody involved in the service of course we have complaints um, because <laughs> um, because one sometimes we get things wrong or sometimes we do things that are ordinary and not at, at a standard that we should be um, or maybe we've not understood what the person that we support actually wants in that moment. Um, we get lots of feedback in lots of ways. Um, we see that when a person we support who has high needs, who may have behaviours of concern, we see we see every in fact behaviour of concern as being feedback that we that we've got something wrong, that there's something in the in fact environment that someone's living in that we've not been able to in fact attend to in a way that in fact suits them. So that's the first bit of feedback and of complaint or of concern that is raised. Um, we also, um, in some areas of the work, we have what we call housemates meetings. And that's where the people that might be living together as, uh, like as co-tenants or in fact as flat sharers or as housemates would meet and talk about what they want to, what their concerns are, is everything going well? And that feedback would then come, come back to us. And it's been interesting in that process because we've realised that um, if you just if you get people together and ask them to have a meeting together, um, some people will talk and some people are confident and can raise issues. Other people will hold back or they might have communication difficulties and they don't engage so much. So um, for some people, meetings like that can be a bit token. Um, so we've thought about that and what we've started to do is to develop a worksheet that each individual has that they can work through with on their own if they can or with support from someone that they trust um, so that they do some preparation before the meeting and that worksheet can come to the meeting with them so that it's their contribution to the meeting and it's a bit more real. But, and it also gives us some documentation in that way as well that, that shows um, firstly that someone has been asked what's good and what's not good in their support mm. um, and, and also is able to be followed up um, so, that, so that that can be tracked and, and people can then expect that something's done about it. Yep. Um, so the kinds of people that, that might be that trusted person to help them, um, sometimes that's a key worker in the staff team, um, but maybe it's family. Uh, but And again, a trusted person might be someone they work with in another area of their life, um, because we're, often we're not the only service provider in people's lives. Um, or maybe it's um, a self-advocacy group, which would be fantastic if there were more self-advocacy groups around, I think, because that's a really, uh, I think that's a really important place for people to gain um, trust and, again, to have people involved in their lives that are not just staff. What are the most important things for staff to do while they're supporting people? Whether someone is on their first shift as a casual or whether they only work for us a few hours a week, we, we want people to do um, a certain uh, way of working that um, will enhance people's quality of life. Um, and for us there's five things that we've come down to from what are the broader practice frameworks that we use. Um, and those five things are that we want people to be able to listen to the person that is being supported. We want to give them a sense of choice and control over their day-to-day -day life. We want them to make sure that the person is engaged, that the staff member looks at, at what this person does in, within every activity, that we're not there um, to just take over the person's life. Um, 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 and of course the, the fourth thing that we want our staff to do is we want them to be able to ask and to respond in, in fact, a positive frame. So it's really important for us that staff don't say no and or wait 
um, that they use positive language. It's not that um, there, is, there are, are sometimes things that we can't do right away, um, but you know we support quite a few people with in fact a cognitive disability and sometimes if our staff member was to say no you will need to wait, the staff, you know, people can get very upset thinking that they may never have the support in something that they really want. And so we really frame it in a way, yes, of course we can do that, let's look at when we can do that. And that is a completely different way of, uh, in fact, approaching the way we talk and, uh, in fact, express ourselves. And of course the fifth thing that's important for our staff to do is to have a sense of um, support the person, if they require the support, to keep their own diary or if they can't keep their weekly or monthly diary to uh, keep a plan of their day um, and if, if they don't have the ability to cope with a plan of the day to actually go through at the beginning of the day with a story of the day and that's important not for staff to create that but to to work out with the person that we support what their day is going to look like especially important um, for some people who are on the autism spectrum who if you don't go through what's going to occur that day for them they live each kind of moment of their day kind of anxious and wondering what's coming next and complete and feeling completely out of control so, um, the other good thing about your own diary or your own plan of the day or your own story of the day is that um, for us as as uh, as staff it provides the um, the activities that are important to you that you want support in and so it's a way of you controlling what your own life is and not fitting into something that the agency wants but having your own life. We, we support quite a few people now who in their past lives were seen to be some of the hardest people with challenging behaviour, some of them in fact the hardest in the state. Now um, this is very difficult work of course or very complex work um, and staff need to be on their toes and, and put their and put the safe systems of work into practice all the time. But that being said, we have people we support that have built their resilience and their trust within staff and, and know that they are getting good outcomes in their lives so that they're not exhibiting the same level of challenging behaviour at all. And, and when I say that, some of the people that we support who have struggled daily in the past um, and may exhibit challenging behaviour multiple times daily in the past um, are now exhibiting challenging behaviour um, two or three times a month um, and this is and the severity of it has been greatly decreased so for us we are um, really quite sure that that we have frameworks of practice that are also safe systems of work um, and it, it has been a really a, um, a quite a, a learning journey in many ways people who sometimes exhibit challenging behaviour give you the the quickest and, and also the most honest feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, that something's not going right for them and something needs to change. And we have, we as an organisation, have had, uh, I suppose, the attitude that we have wanted to learn from every time that that's occurred and see it as direct feedback. Mm -hmm. Working with people that um, might exhibit challenge, challenging behaviour, um, it's not enough just to, to have, like, reactive strategies or um, you, you know that small part of the response, it really requires having that broad understanding of all of those things, being able to listen to the person, being able to um, find opportunities for them to have choice and control, um, you know, having, not having being that, bored. yeah, not being bored, mm -hmm. having um, a plan that they know that they're mm -hmm. going to do um, worthwhile things in the day, um, all of those things have to be there in order to make that successful.